This presentation will talk about acidity or pH and its role in impacting microbial growth in food. Just a reminder of the six important factors that impact microbial growth in foods. Today, we are here to talk about acidity or pH. pH is essentially a measure of acidity. pH is the negative log of hydrogen ions in a solution or in a food. And pH is measured on a log scale from zero to 14. This means each unit change represents a tenfold change in the hydrogen ion concentration. A pH of seven on that pH scale is considered neutral. pH values that are below seven are acidic and pH values above seven are considered basic or alkaline. In this example, the pH of a canned black olive is seven, whereas the pH of the lemon is two. This means that the lemon has 100,000 times um, more free hydrogen ions or acidity compared to the black olive. The pH of most foods is below seven. There are only a few types of food that have a true neutral or basic pH. Those include canned black olives and hominy because they are lye cured as part of their processing. Egg whites also have a slightly basic pH. However, pretty much everything else has a pH below seven. When we talk about high acid and low acid foods, we have a different dividing line for what defines a high acid and a low acid food, and that is pH 4.6. This is because at a pH of 4.6 or below, the spores of Clostridium botulinum are not able to germinate and produce toxin. At a pH above 4.6, Clostridium botulinum spores can germinate and grow. Generally, fruits will be naturally high in acid, where vegetables and meats will be low acid foods. Remember, vegetative Clostridium botulinum cells are metabolizing an increasing number and at the same time producing bot toxin under those ideal conditions that include an anaerobic environment, like a jar of processed food, a pH of the food that is above 4.6, and a food that has a water activity greater than 0.85. When conditions are not ideal, the bacteria will sporulate. The Clostridium botulinum, the Clostridium botulinum spores do not produce toxin. However, if the spore is put under those ideal conditions I just mentioned, it can return to the vegetative state and then toxin can be produced. The pH of our canned food plays a critical role in determining the temperature that we must use during processing. If we have a high acid food, one with a pH at 4.6 or below, the acid itself will inhibit outgrowth of Clostridium botulinum spores. Therefore, we can use atmospheric boiling water or steam canning to kill vegetative cells of other microorganisms of public health and spoilage concern, but spores will survive in these products. In contrast, if we have a low acid canned food, we have to use pressure canning to get to the extremely high temperatures required to destroy the spores of Clostridium botulinum. This high temperature will also kill vegetative cells of other pathogens and spoilage microorganisms. We can take a low acid food such as a cucumber and add acid like vinegar to reduce the pH of the low acid food to pH 4.6 or below. In this example, we have a cucumber that has a starting pH of 5.7 and we submerge it in vinegar which has a pH of 2.5. The condition achieved when all the solid and liquid parts of the product have the same pH is called the equilibrium pH. Here we can see that the pH of the cucumber was reduced to pH 3.8, while the pH of the vinegar increased to 3.8. Since both the brine and the cucumber now have a pH well below 4.6, we can boil water can these vinegar pickles safely. Several factors influence the equilibrium pH. Acid penetration rates much be considered when acidifying large particles, tightly packed particles, or particles with coatings that may be difficult for the acid to penetrate. The trusted recipe sources 
that we use all do testing to ensure that the equilibrium pH of all the particles of food in a pickled product is below 4.6. That is why we can't just change the ratio of our ingredients in our recipes or switch, for example, to a clove of garlic when the recipe calls for chopped garlic. A buffer reduces the size of the pH change when acid or base is added. Buffer solutions are able to remain, retain almost constant pH when small amounts of acid and base are added. A measurement of this resistance to pH change is called buffer capacity. A buffer itself does not completely stop a pH change when an acid or base is added. In foods, buffers are naturally present and this can make it easier or more difficult to control the finished product pH. For the safety of acidified foods, we are concerned about unexpected rises in pH. Again, our trusted resources have ensured that sufficient acid is added to account for the buffering capacity of the food. There are several methods for measuring pH. The colorimetric method, pH paper, or the pool testing kits that we have at home give a general pH range. They are not accurate and we do not recommend using them to do any type of recipe testing. A pH meter is much more accurate and is able to give actual pH values. The pH meter must be calibrated before use and be maintained in a way to ensure proper function. These are what are used in the industry to determine the pH of food. 